Howdy there, I'm Ethan, owner of Mule Fishing, and today I'd like to talk to you about the 180th ounce mule jig. Now it's funny, when I was developing the mule jig, the 180th ounce size is actually the first one I ever wanted to launch. The reason being is that it's just a flat out good sized jig. It catches a lot of fish, and honestly the ultralight market was underserved. There was nothing with a high quality head design and keeper, and so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring something really, really lightweight to the market that still has really high quality components. Now just like every other size of mule jig, this thing right here is great for multi-species. But one of my personal favorite ways to use it is actually for shallow sunfish, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go right back here to this little spillway section of creek and I'm gonna throw the 180th ounce mule jig. I'm hopefully gonna catch some fish for you. And at the same time, I'm gonna talk about some of the benefits of this jig, where to use it, what to use it with, so on and so forth. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first question that I always get when it comes to mule jigs, especially this size, is what kind of plastics do I use? Well, for the 180th ounce, what I'll tell you is that any plastic in the one to two inch range is always gonna work. This right here is actually just a little ice fishing plastic. You can a lot of times find those online, and those tend to work really well with this jig. Other than that, you can kind of just pick up any of these small little crappie and panfish plastic sets you can find at select retailers. Additionally, I really like stuff like this, little Berkeley gulp type bait. And then lastly, I would say you can honestly use live bait on these as well. Wax worms, crickets, small chunks of worms, so on and so forth. So essentially the point is, is it works with a lot of different baits and I would just suggest experimenting with some small plastics and uh, you'll find something that works. I promise you that. They're all facing upstream. They're just waiting for little insects and whatnot to wash down. Oh, it's on. It's on. There's one. Little guy. What is this? This actually appears to be a green sunfish bluegill hybrid if I'm not mistaken. But as you can see, that 180th ounce is perfect for a little fish like this. I'm gonna go ahead and release this fish. All right, buddy, there you go. I didn't expect to catch a hybrid. Oh, look at that. A bird just pooped on me. That's just, that's just excellent. I can see the little bit larger sunfish are just a little bit deeper under that tree. That's a pretty good cast right there. There we go. Look at that. Okay, that's just a good old bluegill right there. And as you can see, right in the top of the mouth, exactly how you want to hook them. This features a small number 10 hook, and uh, that makes all the difference when it comes to fishing for panfish and other fish with smaller mouths. All right, buddy. Beautiful little bluegill right there. Gonna turn him loose. And another one. This one's really pale. Very interesting looking fish. That just looks like a bluegill, but look how pale he is. Huh. Again, popped him right in the nose. Okay, seems like there's a lot of smaller fish right here. I'm gonna move upstream just a hair. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep my distance here a little bit because there's a whole pile of fish down here, but I don't wanna spook them by getting too close. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna say is, what kind of gear should you fish a little tiny jig like this on? Because a lot of people say, 180th ounce, how do I even cast that? Well, I'll tell you, if you're using an ultralight rod and you're using light line, you should not have problems casting this short distances. You're never gonna be throwing a 180th ounce jig 100 yards, right? That's definitely impossible. But this is a little five foot ultralight. It's got two pound test on it, and I can really cast this out there as far as I would ever need to. Oh, big one, big one. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh, he ditched it, he ditched it. This is what I get for fishing so high above him. That was a really nice bluegill. Dadgummit, I got him up on the bank, then my jig got stuck in the grass. Hopefully I didn't spook every single one of the bigger fish in here. There we go, decent one. Not as big as the last one, but a nice fish nonetheless. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Right in the top of the mouth, just an absolutely gorgeous fish. All right. Now the next thing that people might wonder is, where is a 180th ounce going to work well? Well, obviously, as you can see, a really shallow creek like this is pretty much perfect for something like this. But the other thing I'll say is anytime you've got fish up shallow, a super slow rate of fall in the shallow water is a great thing. It's something that a lot of baits don't do well, and that, my friends, is why a 180th ounce is going to shine. Because the fish are not always used to seeing something that just flutters to the bottom extremely slow and naturally. So if you're fishing up in the shallows with something like this, it will catch you lots of different species. And right now we're just fishing it straight, just the jig right on the line. The other thing that's nice about this is it's extremely versatile. You can fish it under a bobber, another fish. This is automatic. Oh gosh, I'm in a tree. He's got me in a, come on. You can fish this straight under your line. You can fish it under a float. You can vertical jig it. It's pretty nice to have such versatility with one little jig. Man, it's a gorgeous fish. 
two in a row. Just another pretty little bluegill right there. This little spillway section is loaded, but what I'm gonna tell you is that if I was fishing with something that sank straight to the bottom, it would probably get stuck in all these rocks. In addition to that, the fish wouldn't have near as much time to go get it because it would bowl it down to the bottom and bluegill primarily feed up. Something falls in the water and they'll come get it. They're not usually feeding off of the bottom. Just based on the way that their head is shaped as well as their mouth, they like to feed up in the water column and that's why light weights are key. Ooh, that's a bruiser. That's a gorgeous fish. My goodness. One of the better bluegill I've caught recently. Look at that. I'm gonna throw you right back. <laughs> there are some really nice fish in here. This is another green sunfish bluegill hybrid, I believe. Wow, you can tell by the, the orange tips on his fins like that. He's kind of got those weird spots. A little bit of blue towards the top of his face, and then you can see he's got a big old mouth. That's definitely a hybrid. All right, Andy's back. There's a whole bunch of suckers in here as well. If I was to put a little section of crawler on there, I might just catch one of them fish. That's a nice, look at that orange breast on this guy. Look at those colors, guys. Just a beautiful, beautiful fish. That boy wanted back. Man, it's automatic. There are a lot of fish stocked up right here. They're just fighting for it. This one's a little smaller there, but it's still a beautiful fish nonetheless. So ultimately we've talked about gear. We've talked about plastics. We've talked about where to use it. If you have further questions, you can obviously drop those in the comments of this video below. You can send me an email, so on and so forth. I'll be happy to help you to the best of my ability. I'll tell y'all boys what, I could do this all day and never get sick of it. God, they are just eating it. They are eating it so good. Every single time, it's right in the top of the mouth like that. My plastic is starting to get torn up. They are feisty. Man, they are fighting hard. That's a nice one right there. Another really nice one. Really nice fish. Not all that long, but just built. If you don't like fish like that, you're crazy. I prefer not to throw them in from so high up, but the thing is, is it's really awfully slick right here, and I'm trying not to fall in the water. Little guy wanted in on the action. There's a solid one, God bless. Look at that, solid fish. Gorgeous fish too, golly. When you can grab them by the lips, you know they're a nice bluegill. Man, I tell you what, I wasn't expecting to catch that many fish. I've only been out here for like 10, 15 minutes and I've had myself a blast. But I tell you what, if you have any more questions about the 180th ounce jig, like I said, feel free to email me, drop a comment below. I'm happy to help as best I can. Overall, I hope this video shows you that the 180th ounce size is a really productive size, especially for shallow fish. Whether you're targeting panfish like I did today or other species, this little jig is an awesome one to have in your tackle box. Pick them up at mulefishing.com. Have a great day.